This is the first of two videos that I've recorded for you to be able to actually use effectively this stoichiometry chart that you're looking at right now. You'll notice I've written some things on there that we'll describe in just a moment. But I want to review with you to make sure that you remember everything up here. I'm, I'm making this mark in the first row of the chart. And you'll see that all has to do with anything that might be given. We could be given grams. We could be given moles, which we are in our first problem here. Or we could be given particles. But whatever we start with, it's always going to be on that top row. On the bottom row, we are going to see the stuff that is the find. And so anything could be found. It could be given, uh, grams, I mean, or it could be moles, or it could be particles. But these things would all be, because we have gone through this balanced equation up here, because we've used the mole ratios from it, we've changed to a new substance, which is the thing that we've been asked to find. And that's what the bottom row is all about. The, the, fi the fine substance and figuring out what that number is going to be. So what we'll do is go forward here and actually run this problem. These are very similar to problems we've done earlier in the chapter. So we're going to start, like always, with three moles of the hydrochloric acid. That's the given over one. Next, we're going to have our mole ratio. Why is that? Because we're starting right up here with the given, and we're coming down, and we're going to need a mole ratio to get us to our moles of the new substance, which will be our aluminum hydroxide. So on the bottom of the next fraction, because we see here moles of hydrochloric acid, moles of hydrochloric acid has to be down here. And then we're going to use the other part of the mole ratio. And you see the mole ratio is between this guy and this guy. So whatever the number is that goes with HCl, which is, as you see here with the HCl unbalanced equation, there's a three coefficient. Now, on this guy, the aluminum hydroxide, that is also moles of AlOH3. And that's what we're trying to find. And the number that goes with it is supposed to be right here, but there is no number, so that is assumed to be a 1. And so we have a 1 to 3 ratio of the aluminum hydroxide to the hydrochloric acid. And now all we have to do is solve the problem. And isn't it convenient that the 3s will cancel, and the moles of hydrochloric acid, of course, will cancel. And that leaves us with moles of aluminum hydroxide. And our answer, simplistic as it is, is one mole of aluminum hydroxide. And we are done with problem number one. And we have gone all the way from moles of the given, which was the hydrochloric acid, to moles of the fine which is the aluminum chloride. Now I've set up a second problem for you, and we'll take a look at how this works. If we now have a given at the same position, only this time our given is for um, aluminum hydroxide moles, and the find is down here, and that's going to be grams of water. So. Grams of water right up here is our fine. This guy was our given. And now we have a path to travel. Our path to travel is coming down here through the balanced equation, just like we did before. The difference is that we're going to need to get to grams. So after we get to moles, we've got to have one more fraction to get us over here into grams. So let's stay on the yellow brick road here, so to speak which is our dotted blue line. And let's now go ahead and run the numbers and see how this is going to work. We're starting with moles 
So we have four moles of aluminum hydroxide. Over one. Now the next fraction that we're going to need is we've we've just taken the trip from the moles up here of the given to the moles or I'm sorry, we're gonna take the trip of the moles up here to the given, which is down here. And let's see how that looks. That's going to be our balanced equation that has to be used in the mole ratio I've already circled. So we've got the given here and the find here. Now, because in doing this uh, mole ratio, we've got to have the same guy on the bottom of this next fraction, which is moles of aluminum hydroxide ALOH3 and that's because this guy up here is moles of aluminum hydroxide. Now we just look at our two blue boxes in the balanced equation. We've got the aluminum hydroxide in there already so now we need to get in the water and that's going to be the other half of our mole ratio and that's HCl. Now, the number in front of water is 3, so that's what we put over here. This is the only time that we use the mole ratio, by the way. We don't use it in any other fractions or any other calculation. This is it. There ain't no more. <laughs> I, I use bad English for empath. Anyway, our number in front of aluminum is nothing, so that's always assumed to be a 1. Now, we're not done. Last time we were done because we were looking for this guy, but now we're looking for this guy. So we're going to use the chart. What is that? The periodic chart. And we're going to do the molar mass of aluminum hydroxide. And we're going to have that over what? Well, looking here, that means we've got to have moles of water down here. And because we need the molar mass of water, we've got to have grams up here of H2O. And when we add up the value for one oxygen and two hydrogens off the periodic chart, we come up with a number of 18. And that's how many grams is equal to one mole. And now we're just going to run the numbers and figure out what this comes out to so you can check your answer along with me. Now that we've run our numbers, we know that the answer that we're looking for here, is, I've just already written in before I started the recording again, and that baby is right here, and we can see it's 216, which is the product of the 4 times 3 times 18, and that's it. Now I'm going to do two more problems for you that are a little bit more complicated and that will be on video two. So get right on over to video two and see what kind of fun we're having there. Bye-bye.